Yes. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Peace be upon you. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, everybody. Nice to meet you again here. Greetings from me, Shawkiya Hawaura, the president of the Arab English Teachers Association in our 30th uh, webinar here in this association. Let's congratulate and thank Dr. Mohammed Zubair from India for his joining us for the second time, and we hope that he will join us more and more, and he will deliver a lecture titled with children with specific learning disabilities. And this is an important topic, as you know, especially for those who are interested in this issue. Thank you another time. Welcome, Dr. Mohammed. And first of all, let's introduce Dr. Mohammed, our guest speaker from India, he will talk in this session. Dr. Mohammed is an assistant professor for special education in the Faculty of Education, Jamia Melia Islamia, in the Central University, New Delhi, India. Mr. Mohammed Zubair is an assistant professor of special education learning disability in the Department of Teacher Training and Non-Formal Education, Faculty of Education, Jamia Melia Islamia, a Central University, New Delhi in India. He is also a global keynote speaker, educationalist, motivational speaker, a versatile, a versatile, dedicated and professionally competent special educator with a master's in special education learning disabilities and certified practitioner from Rehabilitation Council of India. Sorry for uh, misspelling uh, uh, maybe of some words, but because they are some new to me. Also, uh, Dr. Mohammed has vast experience in identification of students with special needs, assessment and evolving appropriate remedial measures. He's a professional who is flexible and accommodating in the design and implementation Implementation of inspiring hands on lessons, employing wide range in Jmenbula. Uh, now, let's begin with our session titled, as I said previously, with children with specific learning disabilities. Let's get to know them better and its management. Uh, thank you another time for accepting our invitation, Dr. Mohammed. It is great honor to meet you and to join us in this association. And also, I won't forget to uh, welcome our attendees from all over the world. So welcome all, and now the floor is yours. Uh, thank you, uh, thank you, uh, Shokya ma'am, uh, for inviting me at this platform. First of all, Assalamu alaikum, rahmatullahi wa and uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon um, to all, to everyone. Uh, first of all, I would like to thanks to the organizers who has uh, you know invited me, who have invited me in this. Uh, uh, webinar, uh, which is related to uh, you know education, and uh, you know we all are learning from uh, one another. So uh, I am Mohammed Zubair, uh, uh, as uh, she mentioned about me, uh, assistant professor working in the uh, Department of Education in Delhi. So uh, my area is uh, education psychology, special education, inclusive education, and how we can make teaching interactive in the class. So I am working in the teacher training department. So um, now um, I think uh, now I can start. Yeah. Yes, yes, you can. Thank you. So once again, thank you all of you uh, for joining here uh, in the webinar. So. I am uh, sharing my screen. Uh, if it yes. is visible to you, all of you, uh, you can uh, tell me. Yes. I think it is visible. Yes, now it is uh, loading. Yes, now it is visible. Yes. yes. I think visible now. 
now yes it is visible yeah thank you so as we all know today i will discuss about the learning disabilities and uh, lots of disabilities are there and and every country you know have some legal aspects and legal provisions and uh, you know in my country there are 21 disabilities in india 21 disabilities are you know um, uh, uh, have been chosen by the government to give the uh, uh, you know facilities to all the students uh, in different because many you know conferences uh, international conferences have been done in the past by united nations uh, when we talk about the salamanca conference in spain uh, we can talk about the UNCRPD in 2007. So yeah, in, in that conference, you know, they instruct all the developing countries to all the countries to uh, to give the education to each and every child in the inclusive setup. So, you know, nowadays we all are talking about the inclusive education. We are, uh, uh, you know, we we have to give the education to each and every child of the community. Uh, and uh, we can't discriminate with them because uh, women or the children with special needs or the tribes or you know the or the minorities you know or the orphans every child should be considered so when we talk about the uh, special needs children so you know as we all know as a you know as a teacher or as a human being as we all know that every child is unique and they have their own potential. They have their own abilities and no two children are the same in the class or in the society. So every children have their own uh, potential as well as the limitations as well. So when we talk about the special needs, keep in mind that a very broad term. It is a very broad term and uh, uh, we can describe it uh, by the, you know, by the difference in the, uh, you know, individual differences are there in the in the physically, in the emotionally, on the mentally, or the behavior, behavioral issues are there. So lots of you know problems uh, some children are, uh, are facing. So ch some children have more than one specific disabilities as well in the society. So children with special needs are those children who have you know different need. So we have to give them rehabilitation, and we have to choose different strategies, and you know we have to make different plans for them to uh, uh, give them teaching. So when we talk about the neuro neurodevelopmental disorders uh, in which uh, lots of things, uh, it covers lots of things. So as you see here in the picture, uh, if you uh, see autism spectrum disorders or the intellectual disability or the ADSD or the specific learning disabilities or the motor disorder and many more. But I have mentioned here the uh, only those which are you know uh, very uh, important for the topic. So uh, today we will discuss about the specific learning dis disabilities topic. You know when we talk about the learning disabilities, you know these children are have their their IQ level is good, like a normal children have, or their uh, uh, you know uh, IQ level is normal or above normal they have. And the other another thing is that they are good in all other areas, but they have some problems in one or more specific areas. They they will feel problem. So specific learning disabilities, you know, it is a heterogeneous group. It is an umbrella term. It covers lots of disorders. You know, specific learning disabilities covers lots of disorders. It is a heterogeneous group of conditions where there is a deficit in the processing language spoken or written or they may manifest itself as a difficulty to comprehend, to speak, to read, to write, uh, to spell or to mathematical calculations like that. So, you know, or the perceptual dis dis uh, disabilities as well. So it covers lots of disorders like dyslexia, like dyscalculia, dysgraphia, nonverbal LD, developmental aphasia. It covers lots of disorders. You know, how you know how these children have the characteristics so when we uh, talk about the learning disabled students so most students exhibit uneven areas of ability for example 
a student in my class a student is you know studying in my class and he is good in uh, mathematics he is good in sports and he has uh, you know normal iq level he is performing well in all areas but he has some problems in the reading only so he is not able to read so as a teacher we have to observe at the early stages uh, this student is good in all other areas why he is not good in one specific area what is the reason behind it and uh, students is physically fit he is normal in you know when you will see the student of learning disability you will find that this is normal in physically she physically he will appear normal and uh, average or ab above average their intelligence iq and uh, but they have some you know associated comorbidities are there you know some associated problems have they have like they have some attention problems they have some behavioral issues they have some other issues in the class so many you know learning disabled students need to be medically diagnosed by the by the clinical process and in the clinical team you know lots of psychologist <laughs> or the speech therapists or the doctors or the special educators and lots of you know the diagnose process will be taken in the hospital or in the uh, in the in the rehabilitation center uh, and teacher and the parents will be involved there because teacher know uh, because teachers know their students very well about their caliber about their strength in the class because they are observing them in the class during the teaching learning process but when we talk about the reasons uh, for it so there is no single reason for learning disabilities uh, we can't say that uh, there is a single reason for learning disabilities but sometimes you know hereditary is the problem for the kid for example uh, in their uh, forefathers or in their you know in the he can uh, receive the gene from their parents and it will be dominant in the future in, uh, and uh, medically reason sometimes and sometimes environmental reasons as well so no real single cause is there so hereditary or uh, genetically we can say or the medically or the environmental issues are there and uh, you know in which uh, there are lots of reasons before the uh, for example in the prenatal stage and uh, during the natal stage or during the postnatal stage there are three stages and uh, during the prenatal stage when a woman is pregnant and uh, she has some sort of problems for example she is taking the medicines without any prescription of the doctor and uh, because medicines are the chemicals so it may hurt her or she is in the stress or she is facing some emotional emotional problems or some, some viral or fungal infection or any other problem she is facing so lots of reasons uh, you know are there in the pre uh, natal stage even in the natal stage when a, when she is giving a birth when she is giving birth to a child and and, uh, and during the pregnancy uh, if uh, a child uh, you know uh, you know uh, child it, during the uh, pregnancy doctors uh, observe that he is not weeping at the uh, at the time of birth or some sort of uh, lack lack of oxygen in their body so lots or some sort of injury Uh, they have uh, you know they have got during the pregnancy so this kind of reasons are also there and also postnatal stages there after the birth uh, for example child suffered from a, a viral infection or the fungal infection or the bacterial infection or the typhoid or the uh, fever or or the hepatitis or any other problem so uh, or the seizure or the fits so lots of problems uh, he can face so lots of reasons are there but no specific reason for it so there are lots of you know it's a broad term so it covers lots of disorders like dyslexia dysgraphia dyscalculia dyspraxia non verbal ld so when we talk about the dyslexia you know it is a re, is it, uh, one more thing i would like to say that learning disability means uh, your sensory organs are working well for example uh, my eyes are okay and i am able to see i am able to uh, see everything each and every letter 
but my you know but the processing problem in my brain is dis disturbed so the perception it is a perception problem my uh, sensory organs are able but still i am not able to perceive the information so it is a perception problem and uh, like i am i am uh, you know uh, for example uh, uh, i i can i can listen and i can see but i am not able to uh, take the meaning what other person is saying to me i am not able to perceive the meaning so this is the this is the you know a specific learning disability so uh, to dyslex in dyslexia it is a reading problem it is a reading problem dyslexia is a reading problem and it may be you know according to the level and according to the severity of the child it may differ the level some students have problem in uh, you know recognizing the letters some have problems in uh, about the sound some have problems in, uh, in in the blending some have problems in you know uh, they make some reversals so lots of problems they do in the dyscalculia it is a problem related to mathematics they are not able to perceive the meaning of mathematical concepts like they are not able to uh, they are not able to uh, take meaning of uh, the uh, the sign of percentage the addition subtraction multiplication lcm scf or the money they are not able to handling the money in the market they don't know if i am giving to money to them so they are not able to buy the things from the market so the another problem is the dis uh, dysgraphia it is the problem of writing you know uh, the, they have problems in fine motor they have fine motor problem you know fine motor means the small fingers we are using or student don't have the control poor eye hand eye hand coordination uh, the gripping is not good he is not able to hold the pen or pencil or anything so he is not able to re, uh, to write uh, the another problem is dyslexia dyslexia is the motor coordination problem uh, you know for example if i am uh, playing with my student catching for i am giving him a ball i am giving and he is trying to catch the ball so he is not able to catch because during the catch practice or during the catch drill you know eye hand coordination where ball is coming and at which pace the ball is coming where i have to when i have to put my hands when i have to use the hands for catch so dyspraxia is totally uh, depends on the motor coordination and there are there are two motor coordination is in our body the gross motor or the fine motor i will discuss in detail and the last one is uh, i will discuss is non verbal learning disability you know many students uh, you know they are comfortable in speaking they are very well organized in speaking they can talk perfectly but you know they have problems in visual spatial and social skills for example uh, they are not able to uh, you know uh, they are not able to uh, exp express their feelings in cues in expressions in comprehensions it is a abstract concept for example i am i am saying by by my hand so it, it it they will not understand the meaning of my hand why i am you know shaking my hand so these kind of cues or the expressions so this is the problem of visual spatial problem and uh, this is a uh, another uh, you know type you know as a teacher or as a parents what we can do because as a parents or as a teacher it's our duty to identify the problems at the early stage because early identification is the important when we you know identify our you know kids at the early stages so uh, we can use many interventions we can diagnose the problem and we can uh, you know apply many strategies and methods and even we can refer them to the specialist doctors or the psychologist or the speech therapist or the other other you know multidisciplinary uh, staff so early identification is important observe child milestones at the early stages as a parents or as a teacher at the primary level or the pre primary level we have to observe which kind of you know uh, abilities child has which kind of abilities uh, limitations child has 
on the regular observation we can observe their milestones how he is writing how he is able to uh, take the food how he is able to speak how he is you know uh, how he is socially active in the class he is interacting to other students or not he is introvert he is an extrovert which kind of nature he has which kind of behavior he is showing in the class like that so early identification you know can observe by the parents and the uh, uh, teachers and then the acceptability for example if you observe some uh, you know different uh, Uh, problems in the child for example you are you have observed as a teacher or as a parent that my child has some problem in the reading or in the writing area and he is good in other all other areas he is good in all other areas but he is not good in reading and writing so accept you know we have to accept as a parent don't uh, ignore these things if you will be you will accept these things then you can make uh, uh, you know uh, the changes in your child you can make some plans you can make some you know goals and you can achieve those goals acceptability in the society is important and then the access we have to provide them access like uh, for example you have uh, observed that this child has some problems and uh, he is not able to uh, speak or he is not able to read or write or any other problem so access is important for example we have to provide them this for example if if he has a speech problem for example aphasia is also a learning disability aphasia means he is not able to express express the uh, views in the language form so aphasia so if he is not able to express so we need some sort of uh, you know interventions or we need speech therapist so access must be there especially schools must be there in the society infrastructure speech therapist counselors occupational therapist physiotherapist lots of things we have to you know provide them in the environment and sensitize and aware the society about the disabilities because you know if we sensitize our society and we have we have to make them independent in the society because they are human beings like us they they also have heart they also want to live their life beautifully so sensitize them and aware them in the society and make them independent because it's their right to get equal opportunity uh, and uh, for example if somebody wants to become a musician or a doctor or a sports teacher so we have to give them equal opportunity in the society and as a teacher it's our duty we have to give them need based education because every child has their own needs own skills own limitations and i will discuss in detail for example this is the checklist of learning disability for example you can uh, see in the class for example the child has difficulty in making sound symbol association for example as a teacher you can observe yes or no the child is facing difficulty in making sound symbol association on the regular basis the child has short attention span a child reverses letters or symbols often in comparison with peers while reading example read so as was so he is reversing the alphabets or letters has issues in copying from other sources properly from the blackboard from the books or from other place the child faces difficulty in organizing things for example organizing by shape color or size and and you know the child faces difficulty in following a specific sequence of instruction the child finds difficulty in selecting details to answer from story passage or chapter you know these are the problems for example if chi if child has dysgraphia dysgraphia i told you that it is the problem of controlling it is a problem of the gripping he is not able to use the fine motor muscles fine motor muscles are in fingers and he is not capable to use their fingers properly so child has an illegible handwriting there is a combination mixture of lower and upper cases while writing there are words omitting in the writing work incongruent position on the paper concerning lines and margins and discordant wrist body of or paper position poor organization of paper slow copying pace 
inattentive while writing, frequently needs verbal instructions during the writing, and difficulty while, while drawing graphs, charts, pictures, diagrams, so like that. And you know, uh, cramped finger hold while holding pen or pencil. If child has dyscalculia, you know, you can observe in the class a child has difficulty in understanding, counting, and skip counting. It struggles to recognize patterns like ascending, descending, big, small, more or less. Reversal of numbers while writing. A child has difficulty in understanding mathematical science like addition, subtraction, division, multiplication. A child has difficulty in recalling, recalling basic math facts, struggling in you know, understanding charts and graphs, poor mental math abilities, difficulty in handling money, frequently needs verbal instructions, and difficulty while doing abstract concepts. The child struggles understanding number faces like that. So, you know, when we observe, you know, this child has some problem in the class. So as a teacher, uh, you know, we have to make different plan for his studies. So remedial education, you know, you know, is important at that time because it is an instructional method, you know, uh, and it is a need based education we are giving uh, to the student in the core areas where they are suffering. So these students qualify for remediation because of their poor performance in one or more specific areas. So remedial program are designed to close the gap. There is a gap in the education. There is a gap what the students know and what they don't know. So we have to reteach them about it. Like that, this is the writing. They have problems in the writing. For example, they are not able to write properly in the class. They are not able to copy. Uh, this is the writing of my own language in Indian language. And uh, you know, so, you know, so now uh, one by one we can discuss, for example, dyslexia. As I told you, it is a generally the problem of reading. So it is a problem of spelling, comprehension, reading. The person is not able to read. The person simply has troubles with breaking down words into sounds and putting sounds together to make words. So this is the problem of dyslexia. So he has problem, you know, breaking down of words into sounds and putting sounds together to make a word. So dyslexia covers like reading comprehension problem, spelling problem. And if you are not able because language skills are there, reading and the writing. And you know, reading, writing, the you know, language skills. And before reading, writing, we can talk about the listening and speaking as well. So listening speaking, reading and writing. So if a child is not able to read, so definitely he will make some mistakes in writing as well. So are bright, intelligent and articulate, but have difficulty reading, writing or spelling. You know, this, uh, this, uh, you know, Lexian, dyslexia students have problems. They are sometimes they are bright students. Sometimes they are intelligent, but problem in reading. And when they have problem in reading, they also have problem in writing as well. So, so are labeled lazy, dumb, careless, immature? No, because uh, this is some behavioral problems also there, uh, you know, and uh, they are very intelligent in the class sometimes and uh, uh, has difficulty decoding single words sometimes, you know, isolation. For example, you can see here, uh, you know, letter reversals. Uh, D for B as a dog for bog. He is pronouncing the word dog uh, and uh, in place of dog, he's pronouncing the word bog. The reversals he can do on the regular basis, not tip for pit. Inversions, M and W, U and N, he's confused in that. Transpositions, he can, uh, he is changing the positions of letters in the word, back and left. Substitutions he is using house and home. So this kind of problems, you know, may confuse uh, small words like add to sad and does and goes like that. So these are the problems of uh, dyslexia. 
and you know also they have some associated problems like memory problems sometimes or the organizing problems he is no, they are not able to organize his letters and words in sentences or uh, they are not able to express their reason in the sentences you know so this is the problem they are facing reversals of letters such as like i told you b and d words such as so and was and numbers as 6 and 9 or 16 and 61 like that so letter and word blurring doubling movement scrambling omissions insertions size change like that <laughs> Now you can see uh, we can teach them the sounds, sounds of language. We can teach them. So lots of challenges, you know, as a teacher, lots of challenges we have. Confusion of similar words. Students have difficulty using phonics. Problems reading multi-syllable words. There are lots of multi-syllable words are there in in the languages. So so students feel tired. you know after reading and he is feeling not well and they have some emotional problem as well during this problem because he is very you know he 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 is in the fear because he is he he thinks that other student will you know uh, make uh, fun of him and other students will make bullying uh, will make bullying to of him and misreads when he misreads and he skip the words so he is in trouble uh, like that so what when what we can do you know as a teacher what are the you know what we can do in the class so encourage firstly you know we have to motivate them firstly you have the ability you have the talent and you have the uh, you know all skills and you can perform well so encourage students to pre read a chapter before reading so before the reading class before pre reading you have to encourage them so students may benefit from using different color you can use different color highlighters or the different other you know innovative innovative things in the reading uh, create a supportive and collaborative classroom culture for example you know uh, collaborative classroom means you know we can use many strategies like the peer tutoring for example we can make the groups in the class small groups we can teach them in chunks uh, in each group you know one student will teach the other student so you can uh, take the help of other teacher of the school in the collaborative manner so create a supportive and collaborative classroom culture and use multi sensory input activities like we have to uh, you know use all the senses in the class uh, they uh, because uh, uh, learning by doing and hands on training is important so uh, we can use many assemble and disassemble tools or the games and the puzzles and you know uh, the activities and the videos like that so offer learners choices as well because uh, you know interest is also interest always matters in the class so learners choice is important because sometimes uh, student uh, want to learn, uh, want to read some story books so so use story books and present new knowledge in small and manageable chunks relate the uh, words relate the words to their to their daily life relate uh, to their daily life and it they will feel better offer lots of opportunities uh, to them and uh, you know repetition drills always beneficial and a small group and the individual instructions always matters sometimes groups grouping teaching but sometimes we have to give them individual instructions as well in the class lots of you know audio books we can make for them as an alternative to reading because they will listen again and again and again the repetition process will be you know the behaviorism theories of psychology when you uh, talk about the pavlov skinner thorndike or watson they say you know conditioning we have to create an environment and uh, and uh, trial and error method we will use again and again we will practice again and again and we the student will be learn so you know you know and uh, lots of apps are there nowadays lots of applications on uh, lots of softwares are available uh, in the 
you know, internet, you can find and you can use all those things and uh, and give them opportunity to speak, to read and, uh, you know, uh, provide extra time to them, you know, because they have problems. So don't expect too much from them in hurry. Give them extra time for reading, for writing. And uh, try to firstly, you know, loud reading, loud reading, always use loud reading with proper pronunciation and then silent reading when they will be able to read loudly, then silent reading will be, you know, uh, we will teach them silent reading. Uh, and uh, lots of colors, innovative things you can use in the class, lots of things, large print text, worksheets you can use, speech to text for softwares are available nowadays. You know? For example, whatever you want to speak, and uh, the, you can see in the text form. So that is the important aspect. Allow voice recorders for them in place of note taking. Voice recorders always better. Board games, puzzles, workbooks, computer games like that. Play sound matching games. Choose rhyming books like that. So lots of things are available. You can use uh, some teach prefix, suffix and root word, root words to students improve spelling and decoding and comprehension. Models of fluent reading, dramatic reading, regular. So lots of things are available as a teacher. If we want to do something for them according to the need of the student, we can use many things. You know, quite a area of reading activities or the uh, tape recorder or the you know alternative form of books like that. So lots of things are available for a teacher. Phonic, phonemic games. Uh, teach students to move a token for each sound segment in a word. For example, reverse a word, say cat, then say say it with the first sound, last and the last sound first. They will say tack. Remove a part, say a cat, then say it without the beginning sound example at. Emphasize, you know, you can make some games in the class, you know, so it will develop their, uh, you know, the problem solving and the rational thinking will be there. So they will learn a lot. So emphasize prefixes, roots and suffixes beginning with, you know, inflections that change the spelling of a base word like that. Make reading fun because uh, you know we have to make the classroom interactive. So if the classroom is interactive and fun uh, is there, so you know, they can spend more and more time with you and make a good rapport with them, good connection with the students, and uh, encourage children to read uh, their favorite stories like that. And announce reading assignments well in advance like that and. Uh, Offer to read, read written material aloud when necessary. Uh, and, uh, you know, lots of things. Lots of things are there in the uh, encouragement for their encouragement. Now I would like to talk about. Uh, about the dysgraphia. You know. As I told you that dysgraphia is the problem of writing. So child is not able to hold the pen. He is not able to use the fine motor muscles, the finger muscles. So difficulty with sentence structure, poor grammar, omitting words, frequent spelling errors, incons inconsistent spelling, and uh, and uh, the spacing problem, alignment problem in lines, difficulty copying from the board or overhead. Poorly formed letters, difficulty with spacing, capitals and punctuations, difficulty expressing themselves clearly and preciously, confusing punctuations like that. So this is the problem of writing dysgraphia. So allow students, you know, to use a word processor with a spelling checker, grade written assignments for ideas only for provide two grades, provide, you know, uh, and the important thing is that Lots of activities are there for fine motor development. I will discuss in detail uh, the you know 
फॉर एग्जाम्पल फॉर एग्जाम्पल आई कैन गिव दे सिंपल बॉटल दे हैव स्कूल बैग एंड दे हैव वॉटर बॉटल दे हैव लंच बॉक्स दे कैन ओपन एंड क्लोज द बॉक्स they can open the close and open and close the uh, you know a cap of the bottle and they can you can mix the pulses or the rice or or the other or the marbles you can mix and they can you know they can uh, put these marbles or the rices with in the box so you know sorting is there sorting you know they can they are choosing you are mixing two products and they are sorting they are choosing this product and separating all those things so if you are not you know so these are the things you can do for their fine motor for their fine motor so fine motor is a you know and eye hand hand coordination will be improved for example uh, good examples i will give you for fine motor uh, for example uh, like like this you know we all are uh, we all do the, these things on the regular basis clothing fastenings you know buttons in the shirt that are supposed to go into you know button holes or loops zippers are there ties collar shoe laces these are the small things we can do as a parent or as a teacher for fine motor development using table wear like they have eye hand coordination when they are eating the food they are taking the food so a knife a fork a spoon you know both for personal use and the utensils used for serving dishes so using table wear as a you know a strategy opening and closing food containers like that opening and closing food containers like screw tops carton spouts plastic leftover containers boxes bottles so opening and closing opening and closing they will do again and again again and again and they will improve twisting door knobs latch and unlatch the window and latch as the door doors lock we say daily living skills like Shaving, brushing, hair, doing hair, makeup, like so things. For example, shaving, brushing teeth, doing combing, applying makeup, lots of uh, uh, makeup, eyeliners, and putting on post back earrings, inserting contact lenses, bathing, showering, lots of things, and the handwriting. You know, handwriting. Uh, Uh, holding a pen or pencil printing versus cursive and uh, needle work threading a needle making the correct size and consistent stitches you can use needle work in this class video gaming because we are using our thumbs and fingers in video game so thumbing the joystick pressing keys in rapid succession on the regular basis operating other electronic equipments like keyboard like telephone like the other equipments musical instruments like guitar like violin like lots of you know musical instruments are there you can use you know as a teacher you can do many things in the class for uh, you know this graphic students because we have to improve their fine motor skills and uh, when the fine motor skills will be developed eye hand coordination will be developed they will be able to write they will be able to hold the pen properly now i will talk about the dyspraxia you know dyspraxia is a also a learning disability like uh, dyslexia is a learning disability dysgraphia is learning disability and dyspraxia is also a learning disability so students have problem in motor task overall motor task not only fine motor but also the gross motor problem our body is not able to you know do all the actions properly in motor actions you know there are two terms you know movement and locomotion i am sitting here in the chair 
and I am taking my hand. This is the motor action of my hand. But I will stand up and I will go to sit on another chair. So I am changing the position. That is the locomotion. So these students have problem in the mo uh, motor actions, in the uh, locomotion as well, in the motor actions, in the locomotion. So you know they have they have problem in uh, motion. So poor balance, poor posture, difference in speed because vocal box is also the lots of you know muscles are in our vocal box. So if our muscles are not working well, so problem in speech as well. So poor eye and hand coordination. If a student will uh, use the spoon to take food, so eye hand coordination problem he will face. So these are the problems, gross motor skills and fine motor skills. What are they are? What they are? How you know how well child use large muscles? To coordinate the body movements. For example, for the movement or the motion or the locomotion, we are using our whole body for our legs, our thighs, for jumping. Jumping is uh, the example of gross motor skill because we are using our legs, throwing, walking, running, maintaining balance, playing sports, like that. These are the examples of gross motor and fine motor. How well the child can use smaller muscles like uh, uh, use of fingers, use of fingers, hand fingers, including tying shoelaces, doing buttons, cutting out shapes with a pair of scissors and like, like that. So both skills are important. You know, if a, if a child is there in the ground, in the playground, he is playing football or soccer or the badminton or the tennis or the running or throwing a ball. You know, any sports he is playing in the ground. So cross motor, you know, muscles will be used. And these are very crucial for everyday self care skills, even in the dressing as well. If he is he is uh, preparing for school in the morning hour, so he has to put on the dress uniform. So he will, he will use his legs and you know elbow and everything. So in the dressing, he will use all the muscles. So cross motor, you know, everyday functions are you know everyday functions he is doing. And uh, in the classroom, for example, if teacher is saying that uh, uh, Muhammad, please uh, uh, please give me that bottle. So he will stand and give me the bottle. That means he he locomotion is there, movement is there, so gross motor abilities are there. What we can do for fine motor? Other things we can do. Play dough. You can use clay. You can use floor. You can use clay. You can use and soil. Many things you can use. And you can add also color in that and uh, playing with the tangible materials because they can touch the material. And uh, uh, Play Doh is a great way of uh, for kids to experiment and learn the fine motor skills to make these e even more interesting. And they are taking interest, they are making different shapes and <coughs> enjoying the activity in the class. Puzzles, different puzzles you know make puzzles together assemble deassemble the puzzles the alphabets the letters the counting you know make puzzles together picking up and moving puzzle pieces into place and help to develop your child grasping skills like that and you know drawing coloring and painting you know this is the another aspect drawing coloring and painting this is uh, another thing you can do in the class uh, as a teacher, you know, lots of students have different tastes, different interests. So if you see, you observe that this child has interest in drawing. So you can use, you know, the colors or the paint or the, you know, the chalk or the crayons for their improvement in the fine motor muscles. 
kitchen tongs or the tweezers you know create game for kids using a small pair of kitchen tongs or tweezers to pick some small objects like buttons coins pasta etc and he will put this into the you know in the box or in the bowl like that past time play uh, you can use many activities in the bath tub as well uh, lots of students uh, you know take interest in swimming as well sand play lots of things we can made from sand we can add colors to them so we can make uh, uh, volcano we can make historical buildings we can make mosque we can make uh, different buildings we can make different things for us like that so import interesting for them blocks and legos we can use for fine motor development lots of things are there as a teacher you can use they can assemble disassemble again and again to make different shapes and uh, uh, you know activities you are using you can use scissor in the class for cutting the paper or cutting the cloth it is a good uh, exercise for fine motor development for concentration for eye and coordination as well threading and lacing is also a good exercise tie knots and you know bows in the string finger knitting is easy and fun too so lots of activities are, are there you know and for cross motor you know you have to for the other you know whole body for jumping for catching for um, you know um, for other activities like clothing or like that so our muscles strength must be there you know the ability to you know our muscles should be flexible so if our muscles are flexible in nature so we are very freely to move the ability of a muscle is good the endurance is good so we have to uh, make the muscles flexible so we have to make drills and practices for them so coordination and the balance and everything is there muscle tone you know so if you want to improve your child gross motor skills you know you can use many you know you can use many activities in the ground physical activities in the ground like uh, walking like uh, firstly improve attention in the ground in the playground secondly increase core strength for example first firstly try to ca catching catching is an example of a sport so try to catch the ball but don't expect expect, expect that uh, he will learn in single day or two three days in a week you have you have to be patient and you have to uh, you know um, uh, you have to use these uh, you know drills on the long run in the long run after after a long time he will learn so gradually increase the duration not uh, you you can't say that i will teach them all the skills in a single day or in a month so gradually increase the duration and uh, gradually increase the uh you know difficulty level improve sensory processing in the activity like uh, you can use the swimming for gross motor development you can use playground for climbing swimming swinging you can you you can make many games obstacle games for example in the school uh you can put five balls in a line uh and you uh, you have to uh, make a gap between the balls and uh, he and you have uh, you are giving him the assignment you have collect all the balls and put these balls in the box so he will go and he will collect all the balls one by one uh, firstly he will collect the first ball and put in the box second ball in the box like that so obstacle games you can make and firstly uh, use large balls then use small balls firstly for eye hand coordination for catching use large balls and then you just you can uh, use the smaller balls and uh, unstable surfaces climbing uh, climbing is a good exercise uh, so climbing running and brisk walks like that so increase your child's confidence in gross motor activities uh, playing on the playground running jumping every time so uh, he will definitely enjoy these things and uh, 
teacher also can give some work uh, some uh, work in which his hands and the legs will be used after you know doing all these things for example you have you have done all these things still you are observing that still the child has problem for example you have done all the activities in the class as a teacher but still you have you have observed that still he is not improving so so you have to recommend the child to the occupational therapist and to the physiotherapist as well you know occupational therapist and physiotherapist will work with them and will find out the problem area and will give them great assignments good assignments of exercises and the you know interesting uh, you know activities they will conduct with them in the class or in the uh, and there and i was now i was talking about the uh, dyscalculia you know calculation problem a student uh, is good in all other areas he is uh, good in reading he is good in writing he is good in sports but he has problems perception problem he is not able to perceive the information and he has problems in uh, identifying the signs of mathematics plus, uh, addition subtraction calculations problem and uh, lots of problems related to maths and math anxiety math fear like that so you know uh, difficulty counting backward or the poor sense of number and estimation difficulty in remembering difficulty in like that so you know in in this problem you know he is not uh, uh, very used to in money handling he is not able to identify the time in the clock or he is not uh, using the coins on the proper manner and he is he is not able to use the calculators or the time table he is not uh, playing ga games of numbers so like that so what when what we can do we can include many activities in the class you know make class interactive real real based you know relate to their life give examples of their life uh, use concrete objects in the class for them for example if they have money if they have time if they have problem in time time problem because they are not able to uh, you know say about time timings what is the time in the clock so you can use worksheets in the class you can uh, make a chart and you can put the chart on the board and uh, you can ask the students when you get up and uh, the child will stand uh, stand up and he will come and he will tell ma'am i sir i get up at 6 am in the morning so say them uh, put the you know uh, make 6 in the clock so put the hands in the clock paste the hands in the clock 6 when you take the breakfast when you go to the school you know paste the hands on the clock for example if he is taking lunch at 1 pm so teacher can ask them put hands in the clock for 1 pm like that so you can use many activities in the class you know mathematics is related to the activities avoid memory overlay overload you know task analysis and you know give task in break breaking break the tasks in smaller units smaller units step by step uh, when one step will be complete then other step we will given to them like that so build retention and, and uh, make new learning meaningful for them and use all those things in practical manner and give visual examples to them auditory examples to them and uh, and uh, for example i am teaching uh, uh, you know mathematics in the class and uh, uh, so students have uh, problems in mathematics so i can make some worksheets uh, 
uh, I can make some, you know, uh, I can use many videos and, you know, motivational material, some innovative materials, the the videos and the auditory mode and the textile mode, everything because, you know, as I, uh, I would like to say one thing, uh, you know, some students are kinesthetic learners, some students are tactile learners, you know, some students are visual learners. If learners are visual, so try to, you know, show them the pictures, try to use, uh, show them the pictures, the flashcards, the videos. Some students are auditory learner, so try to give them the auditory material. Some students are, you know, uh, kinesthetic learners, they learn by activities, so organize activities in the class. For example, I'm teaching factor in the class and what is the factor of eight? So I will ask the students what is the factor of eight? So I will say them make a, make a, a come eight students. So eight students will come and make uh, eight groups of one is of one student in uh, each group will contain one student. Then I will ask uh, make four groups of uh, make four groups and each group will uh, you know contain two students then i will say make uh, three groups so they will make three groups of eight but uh, uh, two groups will be make three three but the, the third group will be incomplete so three is not the factor of eight one is the factor of eight two is the factor of eight but three is not the factor of eight make to make two group of eight make two group of four so two groups are there. So four is the factor of eight. Then then say five. So five is there. Three is there. We can't make the group six. We can't make six and two. We can't make the group seven and one. Can't make the group eight. We can make a group. So we can make the group of one, two, four, eight. So these are the factors. So like that. So hands on training is important in the class for mathematics. So use activities. Use uh, uh, hands-on training, kinesthetic learning in the class. Quite uh, talking calculators or, you know, worksheets and uh, number operations. And you can, you know, gi give them a environment where they can use money. For example, you can uh, make a market in the class and give them money, artificial money, and uh, they can buy something in the class and other child of the class is a shopkeeper and he is buying from him like that. So these are things you can use in the class. So, you know, lot, you know, it's a broad term. Lots of disorders are there. So what we can do, we can do, you know, implement a universal design for learning for them, you know, UDL. UDL is, uh, uh, how much time I have because, uh, According to that, uh, I will conclude. Yes, yeah. yes, you can conclude in two or to three minutes, maybe. Okay, in five minutes, I think maybe. Yes, okay. yes, thank you. But, okay, so uni universal design for learning UDL. UDL means uh, every child has unique needs. So every child caliber is different. So this approach of teaching is good. It is flexible. So UDL looks each and every child information. How we can give the instruction to our child according to the need. Firstly, representation. How we have to represent the content in the class. The material like offer information in more than one format. Some students are auditory learners. Some students are visual learners. So decide. How will I represent the material in the class? Then the action expression. How, you know, give learners more than one way to interact with the material. Different methods. For example, I am teaching the addition in the class. Uh, I am using the real objects. I can use the flowers. I can use the abacus. I can use the videos. I can take the children into the garden. They can count the flowers in the garden. They can count the plants in the garden so different actions and expressions are there so action and expression is important and engagement engage them in the class always try to engage them make uh, make a interesting in class interesting class give assignments 
and in the interest ma interesting manner like that. So these are the things. So interventions involves skill building strategies because we are giving in interventions to them. An intervention means we are designing instruction methods. We are designing uh, teaching methods according to the need to help the child to improve their area in which he or she is weak. In, in which he or she is weak, we can use the interventions because interventions can we can we can use in the class for academic improvement uh, in the child. So lots of interventions like behavior interventions. If they have behavioral problem, like some students have behavioral problems, like uh, uh, he is very extrovert, he has attention problem, he 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 is he is not listening to you, he he is not replying to your uh, answer. Some instructional interventions like he is not good in reading, he is not good in writing. Then we need instructional interventions like that. So we can use many things in the class. So accommodations we can use in the class. For example, accommodation means. Uh, we can, for example, accommodation means uh, we have to be flexible in our methods in teaching methods. For example, if, if a child have low vision in the class, he has low vision. So try to sit him in the first bench in the first row. If a child has problem in writing, so give extra time to him. If if a, if you are giving lecture, but he is not understanding, so you can change that lecture into into the video mode. So you have to make some changes in the teaching learning process, hands on projects or the sitting arrangement or the methods or the different things you can use in the class. Lots of things are there. You know, curriculum designing according to the need. And uh, curriculum designing must be flexible, visual, auditory, kinesthetic learning, multisensory approaches, imitation methods, repetition drills, concrete objects, very free environment, activities, games, hands on trainings, like that. And uh, therapies, counseling, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, speech therapy, intervention plans, child centered method, safety concerns, motivation, self esteem. Give extra time, sitting arrangement, increase participation. You know, you can use many things in the class according to the need of their students. You, if you are uh, giving a, a lecture in the auditory, uh, if you are, for example, a child is uh, uh, reading the book in visual form, but he is not a visual learner. So you ca you can change the learn, you can change the content. The textual contact in the auditory form. This is the method. You can you can you have to identify your child which kind of learner he or she is. So uh, like that you can do many things. So so I can I can say according to the need of the student you know firstly we have to identify the student before the teaching we have to assess them we have to observe them academic areas non academic areas we have to identify uh, we have to assess them during the teaching we have to assess them and during the teaching we have to assess them he is getting the knowledge or not if my method is not suitable for him i have to change my method my strategies my approach and I have to use different approach, different method in the class. And after the teaching as well, we have to assess the ability of the student. The gap has been filled or not, or otherwise um, it is a cyclic process. We have to reconsider the methods, reconsider. I have to make the goals and remedial teach to give uh, uh, the teaching according to the need and level of the student. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohammed. Yes, it was very distinguished presentation, helpful, fruit, fruitful, and many express their thanking for you. Thank you another time. Thank you for joining us. And now if there is any question, you can raise your hand and ask Dr. 
Muhammad. But before that, I want to, uh, to grant you this appreciation certificate from the Arab English Teachers Association, AETA, uh, as it is an honor to okay. award you this certificate of appreciation to you, Dr. Muhammad Zubair from India, in recognition of your outstanding contributions and deliver delivering this lecture this lecture titled children with specific learning disabilities congratulations and best of luck thank you thank you thank you it's my pleasure uh, for such a nice uh, certificate appreciation, appreciation certificate it's my pleasure to be here uh, to talk about the learning disabilities here thank you thank you very much now if there is any question uh, dr muhammad is ready to answer you please open Yes, I will uh, let you to open your mics. Please raise your hands and then you can unmute yourself and ask him any question. OK, yes. Now. Someone raising his hand or his or her hand. Let's see. Wait a minute. Yes, now. Yes, at Dive BM, please. Uh, another time, rename yourself because here I cannot say at Dive BM. You can rename yourself. Please unmute yourself at Dive BM. Assalamu yes. alaikum. Alaikum is... salam wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. BM is for uh, Baraa Mahmoud Khayata. I'm uh, from Syria. I'm, I'm so glad to join you in this uh, uh, workshop or this lecture. It is very thank fruitful, you. as as you've said, and thank you so much, Mr. Muhammad, for this um, uh, very rich uh, uh, information. Um, since uh, I am an English teacher, I need to, uh, one point only to, to be highlighted. We can follow all of these uh, instructions to deal with the, uh, with the children uh, with all those disorders. And this is not um, uh, uh, difficult for us to deal with them. But the, all the world uh, uh, educational uh, institutions are uh, going toward uh, mixing these uh, uh, special uh, students with the ordinary students in ordinary classrooms. But the main problem we, we might face is that they need too much time too much extra time to deal with these the, the, their cases. In this situation, I think the problem will not be with us as teachers, as uh, classroom uh, teachers. The problem is with uh, uh, time management and with uh, the helpful uh, hand uh, of the academic uh, coordinator in the, in, in the school or with the principal himself or herself because uh, they need too much time. They will delay the classroom, the ordinary students, and the, the, the daily uh, uh, lesson and all of the work will be delayed with them. Do you agree with this point? And what suggestion uh, might you have? Thank you. Yeah. Thank uh, you for this thank nice you. question. Thank, thank you. you. Uh, thank you. Thank you for appreciating me, first of all. Thank you. And uh, it's a good question. Actually, uh, when we talk about, uh, you, know, you have to go in the history of uh, why we are uh, including all children in the same setup. For example, you were asking that uh, nowadays we are mixing the child, child, mixing the children in the same setup. So in 2007, uh, you know, United Nations uh, Convention was there, UNCRPD, in which uh, it is found that um, in many developing countries and uh, or in the other countries as well, in the Gulf countries as well. I'm here in the Gulf, lots of people from Gulf. So. Uh, you know, many students are not taking the education in the same setup. The same, uh, they 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 have they are facing some problems, some biasness, some discrimination, or not getting the education. Even the girl child or not not getting the education. If a if a, if if a woman is there and he, she wants to join the school, so she is facing the problem because she has uh, some sort of disabilities or some sort of problems. But you are right. You know, according to the UNCRPD or according to the guideline of each and every country is following the guideline of UNCRPD and uh, according to that uh, you know each and every child is important but the important thing is that we have to categorize them firstly for example mild moderate severe profound if the child has mild or moderate problems 
and we can you know mix them in the general classroom with the general students it is good because at the mild level or at the moderate level it is good uh, to mix them in the inclusive setup where all students are taking education but if the child has problems severe or profound so we have to give them chance in the special setup it is the guideline there i am not saying the countries are not following the guideline the countries and the education system of the countries is not following the guidelines proper guideline proper guideline is there if a child has mild or moderate level problems you can mix them in the same setup with the normal students and if a child has severe problems so you can give them education in the you know special setup because as you told as i was mentioning that lots of accommodations i have to make in the classroom because lots of problems she is facing so i have to give them extra time i have to give uh, you know i have to uh, give a lecture in different manner i have to change different strategies make different teaching aids different uh, uh, you know methods i will use different approaches i will use so the all the you know the content or or the syllabus or the curriculum will be delayed for other students as well and uh, but uh, as a teacher it's my opinion as far as my concern you know parents uh, you know want uh, because for example my child is going to school so i want uh, he should learn something in the school today so each and every child is important for teacher so it's our duty to teach them according to the need of the students yeah but it's right uh, the government the institutions the 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 authorities should uh, take some steps to improve the situation to recruitment to make more and more, more recruitment the teacher student ratio uh, should be uh, you know less less in the class uh, that will be beneficial if the authorities will permit them for example a teacher is teaching 30 students it is difficult in in a special class in an inclusive class you know there should be only 8 or 15 students in the class 8 to 15 so that is the way we have to choose thank you yes thank you very much yes if there is any other question thank you dr mohammed for your answer yes uh, although we are about uh, one hour and a half there are still uh, more than 70 attendees and this tells us and uh, shows that they are very interested in your lecture dr mohammed congratulations my pleasure thank you yes because they are interested they asked me also to prepare another session in arabic about the same topic because they liked it very much yeah sure, sure thank sure. you thank you lots of much. lots of, actually i was giving only the generalized you know i was giving only the generalized yes sir, please wait a minute i will mute all and then you can unmute yourself Yes, you can unmute yourself now, Dr. No, Muhammad. You no, know, it's a broad, it's a broad topic. Lots of things uh, are there, and you know, I covered only general, general things here. But uh, as a, as a teacher, uh, you know, we have to be aware about the adaptations and accommodations in the class. And uh, this is another topic, important topic. What are the adaptations and accommodations we can use in the class to make effective teaching learning process? Uh, to make changes in the behavior of our students according to the need and severity of the disabilities or the problems. Yes, so thank uh, you. really it was very, very important topic to be covered because we are suffering from these issues inside our classes. And thank you for covering this uh, thing. Thank you another time. And uh, please, for our attendees, fill the form for certificate and check your email or your spam because your certificate will be received via your email that you wrote inside the phone. Thank you all and with us on Friday. Uh, this is this time on Friday because our uh, guest speaker uh, is abroad and because of the time difference. So she asked to deliver her session uh, at uh, 10 a.m. GMT. Inshallah. 
on the 5th of August, uh, uh, inshallah, via Teams. OK, so uh, join us another time. Thank you another time, Dr. Mohammed Zubair. Yeah. Thank you, our uh, attendees from all over the world. Thank you and have a nice night. Thank you. Good night. Goodbye. Thank you. It's my uh, pleasure. Assalamu alaikum. Good night and sweet dreams. Thank you Bye. for you too. The same for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, goodbye. You can leave, Dr. Mohammed. Thank you. Uh, someone says that the form uh, doesn't work. No, it works. Please, Miss Hala, you can copy the, the link and then paste it on another browser. Copy the link and paste it in another browser because the problem is with you, not it is with the form. OK, thank you. Thank you, Miss Hala. Yes, yes, I will send it another time. OK, this is the form. Please fill it correctly and receive your email, your certificate via the email inside the form that you wrote. OK. Thank you, all of you, Miss Hanan, Miss Hiam, Miss Hala, uh, Miss Fakiha. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. So join us next Friday, inshallah, at 10 a.m. GMT. Okay. Because we have a very fruitful session, inshallah. It is titled uh, as what we say and how we say it. Teacher talk matters. It is a nice topic. Hope to join us. Thank you very much. Yes. So good night. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. نعم التسجيل ان شاء الله يا مس حليمه في الروابط اللي انا بعثتها راح ارفعه على اليوتيوب ان شاء الله يو كان جوين اس ان اور يوتيوب اند ان اور واتساب جروبس اي ويل سند ذيم هير راح اوزعه سواء على اليوتيوب سواء على الواتساب سواء على صفحاتي ان شاء الله والروابط سو ذا ريكوردينج ويل بي ان شاء الله سنت وين وين ات از ريدي ان شاء الله اند ذن يو كان اف يو ميس سمثينج يو كان فولو ات انذر تايم ذا لينك ذا لينك فور ذا فون يس اي ويل سند ات انذر تايم اي سنت ات ماني تايمز Yes, I will send it here. Yes, Miss. Yes, Serene. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you. Yes. Goodbye. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Madam, Assalamu alaikum. Mubarak Ali here from India. Yes, Mr. Mubarak. Hi, how are you? Uh, fine, madam. I hope all well. The blessings of Almighty. Everyone is all well. Uh, my uh, my belated Hijri uh, calendar wishes to all, madam. Uh, madam, we just Thank filled you. the form, but we not yet received the certificates, madam. Yes, please check your email or your spam, and then you will see it. Okay. And if I, there is I, any other problem, you can contact me after one hour. Okay. Pleasure, madam. Happy to talk with you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.